Well, there's a there's another last tax I want to talk about. Um, it's just been announced, and there's a lot of inf- you know the details is still yet to be left to be undiscovered or see unearthed. Well, and hopefully it's not going to be as bad. But this is another federal government tax. So you, and this is something that they want to have applicable while someone owns a property. So it's not when you sell, it's not when you buy. But if you own a property and you haven't sold it during the years that you own it, is it rented? Is it lived in? And they call this the underused housing tax. <laughs> it's not overuse. Hey, you should get a credit if it's overused. Like 15 people in one office. Oh my money God. Back. And you're probably not going to get a credit. <laughs> the overused housing tax credit, mm-hmm. underused housing tax. <laughs> how does how does it apply? What does it mean by underused? Well, they well, this, this is something unique, different than the vacancy tax of Vancouver or the um, uh, speculation tax. Which speculation tax and the vacancy tax we just talked about. The vacancy tax is the house lived in, no lived in, rented, any part of the house, no problem. Boom, done. Pay, pay, not pay. And then speculation tax. Well, you have it in, but what if the guy inside is not part of a satellite family and more of the tax? Then pay, 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 pay. So there's something new that. This one, the UHT is bringing into all of this, so that a person who owns a property that has a coach house and a regular house may have to file twice for this tax. Like Vancouver City, you got a coach house, you pay property taxes on one property. You file one vacancy tax, you file one speculation tax. With this UHT, is possible that you may have to sell file more than one for each property, as long as there is an individual dwelling unit. With a self-contained entrance and access to kitchen facilities and bathroom and living area separate from anyone else, that's considered a dwelling unit within a residential area, and you might have to report the tax for each individual unit inside of one residential property. Because in Vancouver, like east and west, you can see like a main principal house and then a legal suite in the basement, and then a coach house. You actually have three separate dwellings. Yeah, 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 and then and then、so、you have to file this three times. Yeah, yeah, possibly. You know, then and I don't haven't seen the further details, but it seems very, very possible. And then, then so what is this tax and how much is it? It's one percent of the fair market value of the interest in an underused property held by non-Canadian, whether person, company, or trust. And then it's payable every year,、uh, just like the federal tax, your personal income tax every year, April thirtieth. File you file your personal income tax. You file your UHT. <laughs> so they're pl- planning. So if somebody like my friend who wants to come back like from Hong Kong in、mm-hmm. a year, she doesn't. So you know she has to be careful. She has she she have to rent it out. She couldn't just leave it empty or you know have it as a vacation home. Well, it, it, two things too. Yeah, yeah. This is this applies to whether or not your、um, is this your permanent residence, your second home or not. You no, know, they do have exemptions. And then those exemptions apply, but going on a trip and coming back is is not what I see as one of exemptions. One of exemptions is like if it's under construction,、uh, it's being built. You just bought the house during that year, so that year you don't have to worry about it, right? If someone passed away, got transferred over, and so there's certain certain little exemptions、uh, for the year in which it becomes applicable that you can be exempt from. Um, so um, you know, I'm not sure if.、Um, There is one. There is an. Ex- there are some、um, exemptions、um, for some where you have to be out of town, out of your principal residence, so long as that the, the distance is 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 pe- you can't control that distance or you're away from that home. Like、uh, like say for example, you get a job in Kamloops for six months, and but this you're just working there and coming back, right? There are some exemptions that you can look at for that. I just want to、so、go a little further. Okay,、yeah? so this was、uh, the you. UHT.、Um, UHT is only applicable for non-resident. Um. Yeah. So, well,、okay. let me let me go this one here. <clears throat> um, held by a non-Canadian weather person. Non-Canadian trust. And how they consider that? How do they? How do they?、Uh, Determine that. It's like,、uh, let me just go a little bit further. Fair market value is something. Now, fair market value. A, a little segue here. It's not just the BC assessment value. You know, the speculation tax, the 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 vacancy tax. They just look at the BC assessed value and so be it, right? This one is not. They say fair market value based on the greater of the BC assessment. Or the most recent sale as of December 30th of the calendar year in which the house was sold. So the assessment says two million, but it was recently purchased for three, three million, not the two million. And it go it, because it's filed on April of the year after the year in which it's applicable to the four months of that year 
is also applicable to calculate the, the value. So yeah. So anyways, uh, it's it's not just the BCSS value. Now it's a little bit more tricky. So if you look at point bullet point two, the greater the BC assessment or the most recent sale price as of December 31st. So you can have a couple of buyers and sellers buy, sell, buy, sell, and then they take the last sale if it happened, and then that's your price. And that you pay that one percent on the next year, okay? And then they say that well, what happens? Um, you know, like underused means it was left empty. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah well, of course. Yeah. All of this is based on the, the idea that it's not used, right? If it's not rented in and things like that. And of course, like you, if you rent it out to someone, this one you don't have to worry. The, you know, the, the the idea about um, the, as long as you have it. Say for example, Mer- not a satellite family. <laughs> you have a re- rental on the market, and then you have someone buy it, rent it. Then you're you're safe. You don't need to worry too much. For all of these taxes, you rented a fair market value to someone, no problem. But of course, now we have certain things where you can uh, now. You have one basement rented, but what about the upstairs is not, and it's two separate entrances. And you have the coach house rented, but the main house is not. Now you have more things to rent. <laughs> you know, with the the vacancy tax, right? Well, one room is rented, fine, right? One part of the house is rented, fine, no problem. Anyways, one thing、um, I want to point out is registered owners on title. Uh, or if, and if you have a long-term lease too, it applies. I, I, I don't know too many situations where a long-term lease is it is, a, is where it's applicable. But a you know, long-term lease applies. They're just trying to get at everybody. <laughs> don't want to leave. Don't want to leave anyone out. <laughs> you have a house. You have a coach house. You have a upstairs, downstairs. <laughs> you have a lease. You got a house. <laughs> you own a house. Anyways, non-Canadian citizens or non-permanent residents. So like you say you know, it doesn't apply to anyone who's a non. Resident Canadian citizen, it doesn't apply, right? Okay, and then what are some exemptions? And I got an exhaustive list, not exactly all detailed in regulations, but one,、um, you know, of course, Canadian owner, citizen, Canadian company,、um, um, the spouse of the Canadian family,、um, principal residence of the Canadian citizen or PR owner or children, or even common law. So they recognize common law and spouses as exemptions from people who owning property. Um, and then, of course, this the time frame in which it has to be rented in,、um, so that you can't rent it for a day or two and boom. And, hey, I get you know. Th- there's also a continuous period of time.、Um, they have like a, the basis point is 180 days in which they start looking at with 180 days of the year, so like half a year. They're looking into kind of like the Vancouver City um, um, vacancy tax, kind of, but not exactly. You know, vacancy tax at least 180 days out of the year you rent it out. And then they look at.、Um, Let me see this one.、Um, exemption number G. Owner owns a property. Yeah. So sometimes you can have、um, a trust or, or, or Canadian company or a partnership own it. But then they look at this. If you look at this, ten、uh, percent or more of the voting shares, or ten percent of the ownership of the value of the company is owned by non-Canadians, then then there's going to be a problem. <laughs> so. You know, you have they're looking at ownership and who owns the value of the home. Like you can have 10% of the shares, but certain shares are worth more than others. So if the non-resident person owns most of the value of the share, thing is taxable. Okay, so they've got into that part. You know, fine-tuning things and and adding not exactly the same, but not exactly different <laughs> than the other taxes as well. Say, and then there's other exemptions. What if you got a property that's like when you bought it, it was already run down, and it, and it's got asbestos in it, or it's, or you just can't live in it unless something is done with it, or not suitable for year-round residence. Okay, this is like a place where it floods every year. Okay, you can't live it for during that time that it floods. Nobody can live in it. Well. Then you have to prove it. Then maybe it's, even though it's greater empty for more times than it should, but、um, you don't have to pay tax because it's not suitable to live in. Or, or it's a、uh, there's 100 days, 20 days out of the year in which it was being construct、uh, construction or renovations, but that renovation couldn't be on purpose. It wasn't like, hey, let's delay it longer so we don't have to pay the tax. You know, they have to find that something that reasonably caused the construction delay, nothing you know unreasonable, whatever is not defined,、uh, what is reasonable or not.、Um, and then, if the, of course, of course, if the owner became an owner, you bought that in that particular year, then you, you can be exempt from that requirement. You can't be the previous owner for、uh, not have been a owner for the last nine years, so you sell it, buy it to yourself, sell it to yourself, buy it to yourself. Nope, <laughs> you can't tra- do a transfer to yourself every year and avoid the tax. Nah. So somebody was thinking there. <laughs>
Anyway, so another few exemptions, and then if the person died, if it was probably built during the owner, and it was、uh, sold by the、uh, sold by the、uh, built by the owner and offered for sale, but no one lived it,、uh, so they've taken care of that thing. One thing about it is they look at they do look at time. That if somebody has a two houses, three, and they live in each one of them. They may look at also whether or not you live more elsewhere than in that property. So they have this thing where they look at the occupants' spouse mostly, like if your spouse or your children, and they only go there and live there during the time they go to school. Well, maybe that might be nice. It's like nine months out of the year, they're in there more than they're not. But if they go somewhere, they're six months, seven months, and they're only living there four months, even if they're. Spouse or family member, it may still be applicable. So that's a, something new, a new twist, you know, a new twist in all of these that wasn't anywhere <laughs> else before. And that, like I said before, Canadian tax residency not the test, you know, not the test, you know, not like the BC spec tax. They don't use, they don't look at that. Um, one last thing is dwelling unit and the residential property, you know, so not clearly defined, but it's possible that you have to have more than one filing because part of it is. Uh, dwelling unit interpreted as a separate facility where separate entrance, separate bathroom, separate、um, living space, and then it could be another tax on that. Now I want to leave with one thing, which is a sample.、Um, if you bought a house, it's worth 2.5 million, and you you, know, you have a partnership、uh, where 30% is owned by a Canadian and 70% is a non-resident. So I put this slide here. You can see a sample. Provincial transfer tax: one percent of the first two hundred thousand, two thousand, three percent of the rest. I think it's three hundred fifty. Uh, sorry, like the、uh, fifty-three, and then three hundred fifty for the other one, and one hundred twenty-five for the.、Uh, and, and then what you have is fifty-three、uh, thousand for the PTT, three hundred fifty for the foreigners tax based on twenty percent. Then you have one hundred twenty-five based on.、Uh, Five、uh, percent value of the whole entire home and a brand new home, okay?、Uh, but seventy percent of that, and then each year, oh, sorry, each year three percent, two percent, property taxes, and then you pay,、um, of course, the,、uh, the UHT, the greater of the farm fair market value as we defined before.、Uh, if there was a sale within that year, you know, the most recent sale price and the BC value, and then when you sell it,、uh, whatever what you made. Uh, in terms of the difference between what you bought it for and sold it for, simply speaking, there's a lot more details there, but around 25 to 50 percent of that gain. So that's a nice little slap slap shots. The Canadian hair, the Canadian hair. That is crazy. Where does this tax go to? <laughs> yeah, yeah.、Uh, well, you、oh、know, I don't know. Living in Vancouver, but now we got a, 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 a empty bag tax. <laughs> <laughs> When you go to McDonald's and you buy something, you get a tax. To, basically, you pay extra fifteen cents for the bag, twenty-five cents for the cup, or something like that, and it goes to、oh, the.、Company. And then the paper bags, grocery bags in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. it's like thirty-five cents sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's like another it's, dollar or two for bags. Oh yeah, I went into I went into TT last night. I was I bought everything and I realized, oh shoot, I gotta run back out of the car, grab my IKEA bags, pack up everything. Because hey, I got my bags and they accept them now. So, anyways, neither here nor there. But there's a lot of taxes. So that was. Oh my、thing. goodness! There you go. Thank you so much, Ivan. It was so informative. Yeah. Oh yeah, and good questions too. And it's a nice little. It's nice when we have a little back and forth too. It's really nice. It's really nice. Thank you so much. You're so awesome. So knowledgeable. And thank you for taking the time. Oh yeah, you're welcome. And uh, let, let's uh, let, let's uh, continue on because there's.、Um, There's a lot more issues involved. We can talk about and、uh, in your feedback to anybody to to Melissa. Make sure you let her know if there's more topics you want to. Yes, to definitely. We can we schedule another one. Actually, I want to do one in Cantonese. Maybe next week. Yeah, that'd be great. And then we can do the same thing. And if some if some issues arise during the, this,、um, you know, people, this is a live feed, so we might get some comments and chats and stuff for topics,、yes. uh, further questions, and then we can all go ahead and do more. Yes. Yeah. If you would hear another, would like to hear another topic, let us know. Then we'll cover it. Yes. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Ivan. Have a wonderful weekend and happy Friday. Thank you so much for everything. Yeah, you're welcome, and I、uh, look forward to seeing you guys all again, and、uh, yourself, Melissa. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you. You take care. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye now.、Yeah. Bye.